Thank you everyone for joining uh, today's Pichar Kucha Zoom presentation on Island Insights. If you don't know me, my name is Shamim Juardar. I'm a learning analyst uh, working for the learning analytics team. My first presentation would be overall Island Insights and I need to be very quick. So if you are convener of an Island unit, you will be able to see um, Island Insights uh, in the menu in the left-hand side over here, as you can see. I hope you all can see it, right? My screen. Uh, that I have shared. So you can, if you click on the Island Insights, it will take you to the Island Insights for that particular uh, uh, units. So as I have told you, uh, Island Insights is uh, developed to uh, make your wor workload uh, less. This is an example for myself when I started to present Island Insights, I used to spend five hours to six hours to generate all this data that I can show it to you. It was nearly five to six hours worth of my work every time I need to present. So I managed to do something. So every unit in Island is actually my Island Insight Sandbox. If you look at every current unit is my Island Insight Sandbox. And I managed to jumble up all the names so no one can recognize these students as well. So this, this was from my point of view, that was my repetitive work and I managed to change it. So if you have anything that you are doing repetitive, definitely put it in, in feedback and features request as you can see this one at the top. And if you put it here, and then I can have a, uh, have a look and definitely I will come back uh, to you uh, once this is done. Now this is uh, suppose one of the unit, as you can see, you will see the uh, unit uh, title over here and any links in Island Insights, if you click, it should take you to that particular um, unit page. Any forum link you click, you, it will take you to the particular forum page. If any, any resources or any links over here, if you click, it will take you to that particular uh, resources or the activity. So in this way, you can reduce the number of clicks. So for every Island Insights uh, unit over here, you will be able to see the current engagement for the student. I will come back in my uh, later on uh, to talk details which you can set it the way you want. You can see details and you can see the calculations. I will come back to this later. You will be able to see unit access for the last 14 days. So as you can see all this unit access last 14 days and you can use, uh, see the course uh, access and activity access. So for an example, this one, you can see 27 students has accessed this particular uh, uh, access activities in this particular unit. And this one is saying 100 student access uh, this particular unit. So when it is, I'm talking about course, so most probably they go to the front page of the unit, home page of the unit. When I'm talking about activity or resources, this probably they are clicking on a particular resources in that particular unit. So this basically you will give you a clear idea of whether the students are accessing your unit or not. If you want to see more, you can see one month, two months, three months, and four months worth of data uh, after clicking uh, one of these. So I'm not going to go in details of this, but you can, you can see all these things by yourself for your own unit. Next two reports that we have is top five each within the last seven days, as you can see, it will show you how many students, unique students are accessing this, this particular uh, resources. For an example, this quiz has been accessed by 14 students. And if you click on this, it will take you directly to that particular resources. So you don't have to go one by one. Uh, go to the uh, find your unit, then go to that uh, particular uh, resource or activity. It will take you to directly from there. So this part, as you can see, will show you the top five hits uh, within, uh, within the last seven days. This will be helpful. Suppose if you want to target students to view something, and if you see they are actually viewing something else, this will probably uh, help you to monitor, no, they're doing something wrong. Probably I need to inform them uh, to access so-and-so activity or the resources. Now open activity sections will give you uh, all the activities that is currently open and who in they are due. As you can see, this is currently due. And if the, these are due within the last three, three days, it will come up with to remind a student. So if you click over here, you can send a, an email to all the students for this unit to say that, look, this is uh, this particular activity is uh, due soon. So, and we notice that you haven't submitted. So, uh, please uh, submit um, uh, submit this uh, activity as soon as possible. Please note that this email will be sent to all students who have not submitted. So, not to the whole class, which makes sense. And um, there is a little bit of observations I put 
almost uh, most of the emails that you sent through Ilan Insight and the observation for this, just to give you an idea whether your email is working or not. For an example, uh, this, from this unit, 118 emails has been sent to remind the students. 19% of the students uh, uh, submitted their assignment within 24 hours. 43% students submitted within 48 hours and 73% in total submitted before the deadline ended. So this gives a little, little bit good idea from your point of view, whether your uh, emailing from Island Insights is working or not. Now we go to the next one. For this one, it shows a uh, student login summary. So it shows how many students are enrolled, how many students have not logged in within last seven days, and how many students never logged in. So the total of 182 who has not logged in within last seven days plus one is 183. Here is the list of 183 students. And as you can see through this, clicking this button, I will come to the email later. Through this button, you can send email to all these students who have not logged in. And again, there is an ob observation attached to it. So total 28 uh, emails has been sent and 57% of the students logged in within last 24 hours and 71% students logged in within last 48 hours. Then comes to the academic integrity module. So uh, you will be able to see how many students have not completed academic integrity module for your um, uh, unit. And it will also give you how many e reminder emails you have been you have sent and what is the outcome of those reminder emails, as you can see over here. Now, participant not submitting activities. So this was actually a, a kind of trial for me. Uh, still, I'm not 100% happy with this, but it might make sense to you. I'm, I was trying to show actually how many students have not completed one activity or how many students have not completed two activities or three activities or so on, right? So the more activities they don't complete, for an example, this one, three students have not completed nine activities out of 10. So, so that's why I'm saying that the magnitude could be great, right? A lot. So they, they, they are probably might be in a danger uh, uh, situation, right? And, and I also like put like um, uh, uh, severity, which shows the um, size of the, of the bubble, right? So there I was trying to figure it out, which sets of a student you should put more effort on. For an example, should you, should you more put effort on this one student who is definitely um, in a danger? Or should you put effort on to these 13 students who are not in a danger, but probably approaching, right? So again, this one is a kind of um, for you to look into uh, for your uh, unit. And I'm sure it will make sense when you look into more unit rather than someone else unit. Now, this particular uh, report has a connection with, the, with this one, engagement, which I will come to that presentation together again. Now, forum discussion, as you can see, all the forums will be shown here, and those are, are divided into four groups. Number one is the discussion, how many discussions has been made? Um, the second one is how many, um, how many unique users contributed to the, the discussion? How many replies has been made to the discussion and uh, in this forum? And how many unique users contributed to those replies? So it's very clear from this. Uh, for an example, general discussion for, uh, forums has the most uh, popular, you can say, our students are using more. So this will give you an idea which student, uh, which forums are working more. And this is the recent forum post. This unit don't have any, but if we go to another unit, probably I will be able to show. Um, if I go here, as you can see for this one, uh, there are seven uh, forum posts within the last 24 hours and put it, keeping your cursor on this top of it, you will be able to see which forums are those, right? I will come to forums a little bit later again uh, about the visualization. And the last one I want to show in the homepage is the activity schedule. So what I have do, uh, did, I, I grouped all your activities in iLearn into four groups. Number one is the current activity, uh, past activity, current activity, future activity, which doesn't show, it's not showing over here, and also no dates activity, right? So by looking into this, and if you look at the starting of this unit here, and this is the end of the unit, I put them uh, in a timeline fashion. So this will help you to see 
when each of your uh, activities are opening, right? And when these are ending. So if you see like too many activities are ending on the same days, you might think to basically stress them into, into uh, probably whole session. Uh, again, it's up to you, but this is a quick way to see when your activities are starting and when they are actually due for, from the student's point of view. So this is all about um, the first presentation, which is overall Island Insights. So let me go to the second one. Second one is the different ways to send personalized email in Island Insights. So there are different uh, places to do that. Uh, as you can see, as I have told you, you can send email through um, this one, uh, this one, or you can see email, send email through this one. And there are so many places to send email, but from uh, best uh, to demonstration point of view, let's just consider my actual Island Insight rather than I, I send email from other. So I, this is my actual Island Insights um, uh, sandbox. So as you can see, I put two different uh, menu over here, personalized targeted email and personalized bulk email. So through both of these, you can send email to all participants. You can send emails to a particular cohort. You can send emails to a, for a particular grouping. You can send emails to students who have never logged in or never not completed academic integrity module. Uh, so many, as you can see, right? And the difference between these two is for personalized targeted email, if you click, you will be able to see all the students and you can select or unselect those students before sending email. So this was the beginning of sending of, of personalized email when I started to develop uh, this functionality. So as you can see, my sandbox has a five students. You can select all to send to all five students. Or if you think, no, I don't want to send this to students, you can send to this one, two, three, four students, right? So this is a true personalized targeted email, but it didn't work for the bigger unit, which has a 2000 students, right? You cannot select or unselect every time. And, and the maximum of selection can be done is 100. So if there are 200 students you want to send, you need to send twice. So it didn't work for a bigger unit, although like it, it, you can select an unselected student is an advantage. So in that case, you need to use personalized bulk email. And if you come over here, in this case, you cannot select the students, but you will send everyone to that particular unit or to that particular group. So for an example, you will be sending all to six students. There is, you cannot select it. Or if you go to particular, uh, let's consider cohort. I don't know whether I have or not. I doubt I, my, or grouping, uh, let's consider a grouping one. Yeah, it has a grouping. So as you can see, all students in that grouping is automatically selected. So for a bigger unit, the second one makes more sense. Personalized bulk, bulk email makes more sense. So let's now go to uh, one example of how we easily we can send email to everyone. I'm using an example of personalized bulk email. All the email functionality in Island Insights work same way. So you pick up whom to send. Suppose this is the group you want to send. This is a uh, dear first name I'm say, uh, writing. So if you don't like first name, first name, this is called uh, variables, right? To pick up the first name of the student, right? So I delete this. Suppose I don't want the first name. I deleted it. I put my cursor over here. Then from the variable list, I use, I want full name, right? Then probably I want to write something. This is a test email from unit. Suppose I don't want to uh, write uh, the unit name. I want it as a link so I can put a unit title just for the sake of example. So see these variables are very good to use and it makes more sense. It makes links, it makes uh, links directly that a student can click and go to that particular activity. So they don't have to log in and find that activity. This is a very good way to use it. I have a separate teach post for this. If you want, you can have a look at the teach post. I'm sure Jeremy will put that link into the chat. So now once I, I have done my, uh, finished my writing, uh, my uh, composing my email, you can preview it. Now, if you preview it, see it's automatically converted into the link and the unit name. And uh, demo students, see, I'm not happy because after after DR, I forgot to put a, a space. So I go back 
and I just put a space over here, dear demo student, and I preview it. Now I am happy. This is so. Remember, if you are happy with the preview, you acknowledge and just send. It will send emails to all of them with their full name. I choose full name. That's why it will choose full name. So first student will receive demo student. Second one will receive dear demo student one and so on. So, so this is an easy way to send an email to all the participants. So as you can see, these are the two things that you can use, personalized targeted email and personalized bulk email. <laughs> Somebody is talking. Hello, Mona. Can you mute your microphone, please? Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. Okay, so this is how we can send an email. So let, this is my sandbox. So let me send an email. So it's gone. So one click, it can go to 2000 students. It can go to 3000 students with your uh, uh, personalized uh, email. This is the advantage. Okay, so for all these emails, if you look at any place you go, you will be able to send. So uh, just for the sake of another example, I want to send emails who have not uh, submitted uh, within last seven days. We have logged in into uh, last seven days. There is already a template over here. If you like the template, leave it as it is. If you don't like, just change whatever the way you want. And if you go to preview, you can see how nicely the template converts into all these links and information. Okay, so I go to the next one is the scheduled email. So scheduled email is something that I want to basically promote this, this session. Uh, where you can schedule emails for the entire session, right? So what to do it? If you go over here and the last one, schedule an email. So let's do it. So if I go over here, then you will see this particular page. Now, very easy and simple. There are three steps only. First step, you compose. This is what always we do. Second step, we preview. If you preview looks good, always good. Num number three is, is basically you schedule. Very easy. So now let's go to the first one. I want to schedule an email, right? There are two ways to do it. Number one, you write whatever you want to write over here, right? But in my case, I don't want to use that. I want to go to a selected template. So I want to send an email to all students who have not completed an academic integrity module. So as you can see, these are the three templates, which is pre-populated or pre, uh, you can select it, right? You cannot delete it or anything. The below is the one that you basically create and you can save it for future use, right? So let's add, start to create one for the academic integrity module. I selected this and it came up nicely. All these are populated. Suppose I am happy with this one, except again for the, uh, for the sake of just changing a little bit, I change this to my own variable. Suppose I, do, I want it to be last name. Right, and I'm happy with this one. My compose of email is done. Now I give it a meaningful name. So I know like what I am saving. So let's do it. Academic integrity module uh, template for S2 2021, right? And I create this new template for me. I create. So as soon as I create this new template for me, you will see that is nicely populated over here in the preview. And remember, if, pre if preview looks good, this is what student will see, right? So they are students, blah, 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 and it's looking all good to me. Now in preview, there is another thing called select an activity to preview activity related data. So this is for the, when you want to send email related to some activities, right? So this one is, uh, you don't need to select anything for this one because it don't have any activity things although like it has academic integrity module, but I will show that activity things uh, later. So if you are happy with this, then you need to select whom you want to send. Is it uh, whom you want to schedule it for? Is it to all participants? Is it participants who have not logged in within last seven days? 
all participants who have not completed academic integrated module or all participants who have not submitted an activity. So definitely it is for all participants who have not completed an academic integrated module. So I did that. And my sender email is this one. If you have some generic email, you can put it here. When do you want to schedule it? I want to schedule it on the first week, which is uh, I think 26. So let's do it 26th of July. And when, let's make it in the morning. So there are only two times available for the time being. Let's make it 6 a.m. And I acknowledge that step two looks all good. This one looks all good to you. And I basically schedule it. As soon as I schedule it, it will come and it will show it over here. Not completed academic integrative module is scheduled for, for 26th of July. You can put your cursor over here, which will show you what it is or what you have scheduled, and this is scheduled. Now, at any time, if you don't think like you got an error and you really, again, don't want to send, just select it and you can delete it anytime. Remember, once you send an email, you have already sent an email, then you cannot actually delete it. Otherwise, you can delete it. This is easy. Just for the sake of uh, showing uh, one more example, let, us, uh, let me try one more. So for an example, I want to send emails to all uh, this one, um, not submitted. So not submitted one, not submitted a particular activity. And suppose I'm happy with all this. So not submitted test. I gave it a name and I have created it, right? Now, once I created it, it came over here and look at this one. So this is how the preview is looking. And definitely I'm not happy with this one because this doesn't make sense to me at this stage. So that's why you need to select for this particular uh, type of template, you need to select which assignment. Let's assume I want assignment one. So now if you look at your step two, it's all good. You have an assignment, this one due on so-and-so date and so-and-so, right? Now I am very happy. Now I go to over here and say that send schedule, schedule this email for all participants who have not submitted an activity. So at that point of time, it will, uh, I learn insight into look into who have not submitted and it will send email only to them, not anyone. So at that point of time mean the time when it is scheduled to send, not the time you basically do it. And I want to do it suppose in the last day Friday and 10 PM and I do the same thing. As you can see, now it's done. If you preview it, you will be able to see all this, but in the preview, it will show as uh, activity title, my variable thing. It's not the actual activity. This activity, we can see it from here. You have scheduled it for activity one. So this is why, this is how you can schedule your email. And again, I want to uh, say that you can delete all this at any time if you feel like later, no, this is not right. So if you want to try it out, you can try it out and delete it, there's no problem. Until and unless you reach to this particular date, you can basically create and delete it just for the sake of trying. Okay, next I go to the next one. Um, uh, student unit engagement and participants not submitting activities visualization. So this is what I was talking about. So you have this one by default, right? So by default means you can see some engagement score for your own unit. Now, uh, how this is uh, engagement unit is calculated and settings you can do. So let's see. So first of all, if you want to, if you are not happy with the uh, current settings, you can go to the settings. And I encourage you to go to the settings and change it the way it makes sense to you. So by default for you, you need, you will see that login activity. So students are not login within last seven days has automatically taken 50% of the engagement score. And uh, students uh, on time submission is uh, taking 50% score, which is making 100%, right? And as you can see, all your activities over here is, will be shown. And on this day, uh, right hand side, on time submission, which is actually uh, this 50% one, this one uh, will be divided nicely. So it becomes 100%. So first of all, what you, what you, you, you need to do if, and if you want to change is uh, 
keep only the meaningful, meaningful quizzes or activities that actually contributes to your uh, engagement. So let's assume for, for this, not for this unit, I go back to my Island Insight Sandbox over here because I don't want to change that. So I go over here and uh, for this one, suppose this is how it looks, right? I changed it and I said that this particular uh, activity and this particular activity are the most important one. So I put 50% and 50% and which made 100%. So active, basically engagement calculation will take out all other activities from the calculation and will only concentrate only for these two. Now, if you have three or four, put nicely what could be the weight innings. Probably it might be 25%, 10%, and just make it 100% at the end for the sake of the calculation, right? And if you save that, then if you go back, you can see the difference uh, over here, right? And the reason I want you to um, change and make it accurate because it's not only affect this one, it also will affect your this one, uh, this particular, uh, I go back to this. So this also will affect over here. So in that case, it's not going to consider all your activities, but it will consider only the meaningful or the important activities. And it will tell you, okay, five of your students haven't completed two of your meaningful or the important activities rather than all activities. So this is one of the reason that I think you uh, can go to the settings and change it the way you want. Another reason to change, uh, because Island Insight also adds all these engagement scores. And uh, as you know, you can go to the unit engagement trends and the end of the session to view all the engagement, right? Um, so basically the more accurate you will make, the better it is for you at the end of the session to view. Second of all, how this calculation is calculated? If you want to go, if you go to the calculation, it will give you full uh, how it is calculated. So this 71% cal uh, the way it is calculated here, as you can see, it picked up students who have not logged in within, who has logged in within the last seven days, it's 48%. Waiting is 100%, which is 48. But in when I'm combining this one and this one, I'm taking only the 50%, which is 24%. Same as over here, as you can see, grade, board, uh, grade book item on time submissions. Again, you will see all your activities over here. Whatever on time submission um, weight innings you have given, then what is the percentage of the on, on time submissions for each of these and a nice calculation for those. I am sure this will make more sense when you will look into your own units rather than someone else units. Then again, like 50% I am taking over here. So this blue 50% and this blue 50% when I am adding it up over here, which is 71.32 and I'm rounding it to 71, which I am basically showing at the top. So this is how the calculation and it's very clear. If you go to the calculation, you will be able to see. If you click on the details, just to let you know that as I have calculated for um, whole unit, this one is basically showing uh, for individual students. At some point of time, if you are interested to see which of the students are more engaged, which are the one not, you can come over here. And this is the total engagement, if you can see. If you put your cursor over here, it will give you a little bit more information about that student. From, for, this, for an example, this one is saying, this particular student uh, have not logged in within the last seven days. Um, uh, and on time submission, submission, seven out of nine activities, right? See, it gives a little bit of idea. So if you want to uh, see uh, all the students who has probably um, not engaged in terms, of, um, in terms of submission, just click this one. I think it will, uh, you can sort it out. So see zero to 11, 22 and so and so. And you can send email from this as well. And you can filter with this as well, if you want to see, um, depending on the engagement logging activity, engagement submitted uh, gradebook, and total engagement. So as you can see, um, you can basically um, see everything over here by only looking into all these three about all the engagements. I go to the next one, which is a forum visualization. 
Now, forum visualization, as I've told you, is all already like there are four uh, groups I divided into, but if you go over here, you can see a little bit more details that uh, for each of your forum, it will show how many discussions and by how many unique users. This one will show how many posts, uh, uh, post by how many unique users. So this is the reply and this is the discussion. Now let, let me took a bigger bigger one. Suppose this one has a 574 post. If you want to see the visualization, you can just click over here. And as you can see, you can see the um, uh, visualization for this particular forum, right? So um, the center point is the starting point. And if you put your cursor over here, you can basically read all of this. You don't have to go to one by one, right? You can quickly read. Uh, as you can see. So suppose this is a uh, starting point discussion. Somebody has replied to the discussion. Somebody has replied to the discussion and somebody has replied to a reply, right? So this is a quick way if you want to just to visualize how many, much engaging is this particular forum is. Uh, if I show you this particular uh, diagram, Uh, because I can't show you there. If there is any bright red over there, that is basically you. So you can see which are the threads you have actually replied, right? That will show as, will be showing as a bright red. If you see a bigger icon like this, uh, as you can see there, that means these are basically new posts, right? So uh, this has a certain benefit. You can quickly identify which are the big, uh, which are the recent posts or not and whether you have replied on or not for a bigger, bigger, um, larger uh, discussions of the replies. All right, so now I go to combined forum participants report, right? Combined forum participants report, this is a new one. So uh, if you look at this forum, this forum, uh, we have a visualization we have a forum participation, so that is you can uh, see it one by one forum participation. You can choose a forum to see it, or you can see the combined one. So combined one is the new one. So let me go to the combined one. If you go to the combined one, as you can see, it will show you um, all of them together, all your forums together, and it will show you student by student. So this particular student has uh, made a one discussion and 12 replies. And you can see from where are those coming from, right? So uh, from general discussion is definitely discussion started one, uh, reply count 12 uh, for this particular student. And you can uh, basically sort them uh, saying that, uh, show me all the students who have not made any discussion, right? Or who have not replied to these forums, right? And you can basically <coughs> sort them over here as you can see. Total discussion is started and total discussion reply count. So this will give you an idea of to find a certain sets of students who have not probably put enough discussion or who have not replied to the forum, right? Again, it's up to uh, the unit convener how you want to use it, but it gives you a detailed um, uh, forum, uh, this, uh, forum um, report. Uh, uh, student by st student report for all the forums. Just before I go to the next one, uh, just to recap, forum visualization is similar thing, but you can do it for a single forum. So suppose if you are interested only this one, so just go over here. It gives you basically similar information that I have shown, but this is forum by forum rather than all forums. The next one is uh, quiz question analysis. Quiz question analysis, student by student, right? So, so if you go to the activities and activity details, it basically gives you all the activities and there are some more meaningful things for that particular activities, right? So if you go over here, you can see all of this, but for today's presentation, let me only talk about uh, the new one, which is qu quiz question analysis, student by student, right? So this is the pink, pink, pink icon that I put. So if you click for suppose for these students, if you click over here, it will show you a analysis of all the questions for that particular quiz, uh, student by student. So for an example, if you come over here, as you can see, this particular quiz has 
lost lots of questions, right? It, again, it will be more meaningful to you rather than me. All of them, lots of questions. Then it will also show for each student how many this student has graded right, how many this student has graded wrong, how many this, uh, times this student uh, gave up, how many questions this student got uh, partial marks, and how many needs grading, right? So as you can see all of this, so you might want to know, show me um, all the students who has graded most probably wrong, right? So these are the students probably graded wrong for many questions, right? This is a uh, way that student by student, you can analyze it. This is a new functionality. I'm sure like after getting feedback from all of you, I, it, it might be more better. Just going to the next topic, I want to also recap we have another one called this one, uh, this one, which is a quiz analyzer, which is uh, similar to this one. Uh, I go this one. So what it does, it analyze your co co uh, quiz, not student by student, but from question by question. So as you can see, this quiz has, uh, how many question? Uh, 48 question, and it basically shows how many, what percent of a students graded right for that particular question. So uh, for my side uh, point of view, if I, if I uh, do the reverse, that means graded right is less, right? So which means this particular question, most of the student has done wrong, right? So it might be helpful to you. You might think like probably you forgot to put some uh, uh, um, contents for this particular question or the question is wrong or it might be so many things. So that way you want to have a look or, or uh, analyzes this quiz, you can do in two, two ways now. One is uh, quiz uh, question analysis by quiz or question analysis by student by student. These are, I'm, I'm pretty sure will be very helpful at the end of the session when you try to come up with a good approach of your uh, unit or uh, look into the question and the quizzes. All right, so I go to the next one. Uh, my next one a presentation is combined Eco360 video view. And after that is uh, Eco360 downloaded video and Eco360 video created, right? So let's see. So the, uh, basically we have <coughs> Eco360 is always a troublesome for us because we do not have direct access to data, right? I have tried many different ways to come back with a solution for it. Uh, last time there was a different solution, which I failed. This one is looking a little bit better, but not 100% uh, good. So these are the two, right, we have. So I quickly uh, look into the Eco360 video view first, which gives you uh, video view, Eco360 video view for the, um, for each videos, right? So there are lots of data over here. So if you come over here, then you can select the video. So as you can see, these are the videos for this unit. And as you can see, I have created, uh, uh, I have added the uh, date at the, uh, in front of, the, of all this video. The reason is when um, Eco360 recorded automatically, then sometimes all the uh, recording has the same name, right? So this might be helpful to figure it out when it was recorded. So that's why I put it at the front. So let, let us, go to one of these. If you go to one of these, it will uh, give you how many views, uh, how many minutes uh, a student has spent on that particular video. So as you can see over here, it will also give you total downloaded. For this case is zero. Just to let you know that many of you has uh, asked me to find a way to whether a student has downloaded or not this particular video. There is no way to do that. All I have is can to report you the total dial download, but who has downloaded? I can, uh, the, no, Eco 360 do not have that data uh, to report on. So as you can see, these are the students and this shows when they have first was, when they have last was, how many minutes they have watched and how, what is the total minutes they have watched. So if you basically sort it, you can easily figure it out which of the students have watched most and the other way around, which are the students haven't watched, right? 
um, this is easy. You can uh, compose and send email as you can see, you can download this data as well. So these are the, uh, this is the new functionality download uh, data as CSV and also the adding create date is the new functionality. So I go to the next one, which is actually a little bit uh, more than uh, uh, the one. So this is a combined Eco360 reporting. Uh, so in this case, what you can do, you can uh, basically say, okay, I want three of the of my videos. I want to know about three of my videos, not all, not a single video, but I want to see uh, three of these. So in this case, if you come over here, as you can see, it will show all the videos and it will calculate the total number of videos watched. Uh, per student and total minutes watched. Mm, and these are the individual. Now you can go to setup over here. And then you can say, okay, I do not want to see all the videos at, at this time. I want uh, only for suppose two, two, three videos. So now you can come over here. Suppose you can say, okay, I'm interested in lecture one, lecture two, lecture three and five. So four videos and you update it. And if you go back there, it will produce report only for your four videos, right? So this might be make sense when you you are, are like probably looking into um, uh, videos which has been watched for this particular week. So you probably know which are the videos they should watch uh, for this particular week. So if you look over here, as you can see, only four videos now has come up and it will give you total minutes watched and you can filter it, you can sort it, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So these are the student didn't watch any of those four versus these are the student watched all those four videos. There are lots of students in this unit, right? Okay, so next I go to the, I think last one that I want to uh, show you today, students who have not accessed a resource or have not completed an activity. So these are the two reports is comes coming from here. So students who have not accessed a resource and student who have not uh, completed an activity. So the difference is when I'm saying like students who have not completed and access a resource, you can select a resource over here. Uh, suppose uh, this one, and it will show you list of students who have not accessed that particular resource. And similar way in uh, all Island Insights has a filtering option. You can filter with first name, last name, uh, or so and so, or sorting function, as you can see, they have not looked into this particular resource and you can compose email and you can send email to all these students, right? And the second one is um, this one who have not completed an activity. I don't think I will be able to show you because this uh, particular units uh, don't have the activity completion on. So in this one will work if you have the activity completion enabled in your unit. So in my sandbox I have, so I, if I go over here, as you can see this. So if you don't know what is activity completion, then uh, if you go to uh, your unit to any of this, uh, then if you edit it, then at the last one is second last one is your activity completion. So if you have activity completion on over here, you, uh, you will be able to see this particular, uh, you will be able to use students who have not completed an activity option. And as you can see, you can send an email as well. Right, so this uh, basically ends up uh, my um, presentation for today. I think that's all I have and I'm well on time. So feel free to ask me any question if you have, and I'm sure Jeremy has, I haven't looked into the chat, but I'm sure Jeremy has answered many of you. Uh, I will look into the chats again later and uh, definitely I will email you if I can't answer it right now. Thank you very much.